here having a great day the topic of today's video is ganglions of head and neck now the basic concept behind the ganglions of head and neck is they are primarily supplied by sensory parasympathetic and sympathetic supply so we will discuss the three supplies separately let's start with the sensory supply it's pretty basic all you have to do is draw four little circles one two three and four okay we are done with the circles now let's draw three lines one two and the third one now we can resemble the three lines with three brothers you know sometimes the younger brother has to sacrifice so is the case with the sensory supply the first two lines will go straight to the first two ganglia and the last one it will be divided into two and supply the lower two now let's name them the first one it's called ciliary ganglion the second one it's called terigo palatine ganglion the third one, this is the submandibular. And the last one, this is known as otic ganglion. Now, you will be thinking that what are these lines? Actually, these are the branches of the fifth cranial nerve the sensory branches of the trigeminal nerve so these are v1 that is ophthalmic v2 that is maxillary and v3 that is mandibular So we are pretty much done with the sensory supplier. Now let's move on to the parasympathetic supply. Again we are going to draw four circles. One, two, three and four. The names are the same, ciliary, terico, palatine, submandibular, and aortic. The aortic supplies the parotid gland. okay so again we are going to draw three centers or three nucleuses you can say the top one this is called the adingo westphal the middle one that is called as superior salivatory And the lower one, this is called as inferior salivatory. Now these are also three brothers, but this time the 
youngest one says that I have already sacrificed as in the case of the sensory but now I'm not going to sacrifice so what happens the middle one say okay I'll sacrifice this time so the Dingo Westfall nuclear the supply goes to celery you can click on from the superior salivatory it gets divided half of it to the pterygopalatine and half into the submandibular from the inferior salivatory it gets undivided and it supplies otic now what are these three lines these are the three nerves this is the ocular motor nerve and this is facial nerve and the last one this is the glossopharyngeal nerve okay one point to note is that the branch of superior for the facial nerve that supplies the pterygopalatine this is known as greater petrosal nerve so this is pretty much it we are done with the parasympathetic supply move on to the sympathetic supply so in case of simple uh, sympathetic supply we will draw the four circles again and the names are same ciliary Terrible palatine, submandibular, and otic. So, what happens is the sympathetic supply comes from the sympathetic plexus and passes through inferior cervical, middle cervical. And superior cervical nucleon. Now, this time there will be two branches coming out of it. The first one and the second one. Now there are two major arteries, external carotid artery and the internal carotid artery. The first branch is from the plexus around ECA, that is external carotid artery. The second one is from plexus around ICA, that is internal carotid artery. Now, these will divide, the first one will divide and supply the lower two, the submandibular and the aortic. And the upper one will be also get divided into two and supply ciliary and pterygopalatine. Uh, one point to be noted is that in case of pterygopalatine, the branch of the facial was greater petrosal nerve. Greater petrosal nerve and the deep petrosal that this one from the plexus around the ICA is deep petrosal nerve. Both of these nerves pass and they constitute the nerve of pterygoid canal. Deep petrosal and greater petrosal nerve. So you are pretty much done with the supply of ganglions. Thank you so much.